Welcome back. This is Brexit Paper 2. It's 2011-2012. Again, the syllabus is slightly different than yours, so any of the questions that aren't on, I'll let you know. The other thing that we need to know is, I'm not doing the standard writing this. You have to do the capital letters and full stop when you're using these videos. Get into the habit of full sentences. I'm not going to use the full sentences. I'm just going to go through it. So here we have the first one is uh, about the configuration of an atom. So the diagram below represents a neutral atom, same number of protons as electrons, of a helium isotope. The isotope, the same atomic number, different atomic mass. Write the names of the particles indicated in the boxes. Now, now so there's a trick written for us here. And the trick is to count the electrons first, because remember, P, E, N. Right? There are two electrons. So there must be two protons. Right? So these boys here are the protons. There's the trick. That there must be a neutron then. That is the neutron. That's an electron. And this is a strange sort of a question because they ask you to label each electron. But again, that's the examiner being slippy. Slippy examiner. So we'll go to the next question. The nucleus of an atom of an ice of sodium is represented by this. So remember, you should be putting in a cross zebra. It's called exam technique. So I know there's 11 protons. There's 24 nucleons. So we go, there's 11 protons. So there's 24 nucleons, of which there is 11 protons. So there must be 13 neutrons. So there's my spade work done for this question. What's the mass number of this nucleus? Ah, cross zebra. Atomic mass, atomic number. Mass number. So it's 24. What information does the mass number give us? Number of nucleons. And sodium has several isotopes. In terms of the particles, what makes up a nucleus? What do they have in common? So the isotope, same atomic number. So what's it asking here? In terms of particles, same number of protons. So again, if we are going to do these questions, you're, you're looking for capital letters and full stops. We want full sentences. You have to practice that. Look at the exam technique that I have used. Look up here. I've used PEN. I've also used across zebra. I'm working during the exam. I'm not just trying to answer the questions. I'm trying to use what I know to work in the exam. Question number two. Oh, part four. Again, a five marks for this. And all you need to know is alpha is 4, 2, H, E. Beta, not E minus 1. And gamma, gamma, not, not. If you don't know that, you can't answer the question. You're going to miss five marks. So an isotope by beta decay. There's your beta. Not E minus 1. So if you have not learned, silly nilly. These numbers here add up to this number. So that must be 12. 12 take away 1 is 11. That's 24. 24, no, it's 24. Five marks for that. But you see if you don't know these, you might as well not bother. A substance which makes video radiation is placed close to your detector as shown below. You're given a number of aluminium squares, each one millimeter thick. The aim of the investigation is to find out what least thickness of aluminium is needed to prevent the beta radiation reaching the detector. The thickness is known as the thickness is known as the range. Describe briefly how you carry out this investigation. How would you know when you have reached the range of beta radiation is in aluminium? Remember, this will come down to a figure. And will not go any below. Any below. It will not go. Away. The reading will not go below this certain figure, and that's going to be your background radiation. And your background radiation is due to cosmic rays and uh, nuclear accidents and the rocks that we stand on. So when we drop the aluminium in here, this number will fall. So the more sheets of aluminium we drop in here, this falls. But there comes a stage that will fall no more. 
and the reason for that is the detector is just picking up the background radiation. We've done this question before. We'll move on. Uh, this question is not on. Again, remember I said this is an old syllabus, so it's not on. On to question number three. The energy of air striking the blades of wind is 20,000 joules, or all energy is measured in joules. The electrical energy transformed by the blade of the wind is 5,000 joules. How much energy? So remember, there is 20,000 coming in. Do your bit of speed work. There's your wind generator. It's a machine. It changes kinetic energy, movement of air, to electrical energy. So the useful energy is 5,000 joules. We better put the joules in there. That's of electricity, and the rest is wasted. And then there must be 15,000 wasted. Right, so there's a speed work done for this one. The electrical energy transferred to the blade by the wind generator is here. How much energy is wasted? There's it there. Yes, there's our energy diagram. Energy in equals energy out. What's that really? Conservation of energy. So there's 15,000 joules of energy wasted. One mark, one answer. Calculate the efficiency. Now we're looking here for three marks. So the first one is efficiency. It's for the formula. Is energy out or useful over energy in? Right? Remember efficiency is no unit. So the three marks we're looking for energy out, 5,000. Over the energy in, 20,000. And we get a number between 0 and 1. Now get the calculator. And do your sums, type it in a couple of times. Right? Remember Mars bar fingers, 5,000 divided by 20,000 is equal to 0 0.25. That's 0 0.25. It is no units, it's just comparing that to that, or 25%. So it's 0 0.25. Did I get my three marks? There's my three marks. Equation should be in a bracket. There's the working out, and there's the answer. And there are no units. Always write it down. There might be a mark for saying there's no units. Remember, cover all angles. Now, next question. It says here, the table of results shows the displacement of a lorry as it varies with time. So it's a displacement time graph. And there are only two things we can tell from a displacement. Time graph. Displacement at a time. And two. Slope is the acceleration. Is, is not, is the velocity. Or speed. Don't make that silly mistake that I made there. So two things you is a distance time graph. You can tell the distance at a certain time. And the slope is the velocity or speed. Right? So we're better plot these. Not, not. Again, with a pencil. No, pencil. 150 is 5, so 5. Follow it up. There's 100. There's 150. 10 is 300. 10. Follow it up. 300. 15 is 450. 15. Follow it up. I'm going to have a user ruler. Right, 400, 420, 440, there's 450, 20 is 600. Notice them, remember there's marks for this, so I'm taking my time. See what I'm doing? I'm trying to get every mark, and 25 is 750. Just ever so gently marking them. There's the graph. Notice we have it off the graph paper as well. 
use the graph to calculate the velocity of the lorry. Now remember, look, it's a displacement time graph. The two things we can tell, displacement of time and the slope. So I want the slope. So let's go and do the working out. Three marks. Give me the unit so that's, I don't get a mark for the unit. So gradient equals velocity equals a rise over a run. So tick two handy ones. There's one there. Look, there's the rise. Look, there's the rise. How much is that? 750. Look, there's the rise. That much. And there's the run. That much. Over 25. Now, don't make a highlight here. Get rid of the margin bar fingers. 750 divided by 25. 30. You know what you do? You do it again. Try an hour one. Try 300. There's, try that rise. 300 over 10. That should be the same gradient. 300 divided by 10. 30. Fair enough. Full mark shot. Take time to plot the graph. Look, only one point. For a line of this fit. No, only one point, but I got them all. Right, let me see. Again, this question, look. It's not on anymore. That's the old syllabus, so that one's not on. There, here's Arnie Schwarzenegger. Probably showing the usual Arnie Schwarzenegger. The weight lever can raise a total load. Now that's a load, that's a force. Look, it's force, how do I know that? It's in newtons, 800 newtons, through a vertical height of 2.5 meters. Calculate the work done. Now let's have a look at this. Work done, measured in joules, three marks. So the first thing is, work done is equal to force by distance. Mark that. Now you see if you don't know that, you can't get the rest of the marks. That's one mark. What's the force? It's 800. 800 newtons. So that's all right. Remember that's in newtons and that's in meters and that's in joules. So 800. Definitely. And 2.5. Happy days. Right. So. 800. By 2.5. 2,000, 2,000 joules. Do that again, just to check it. 800 by 2.5, 2,000 joules. So the work done is 2,000 joules. See why I checked it twice there. Now the weight lifter can lift the load in four seconds. Use your answer up here to the power. Again, what am I looking for? I'm looking for three marks here. Power equals energy over time. What's the energy? 2000. That there's it there. Over the time, four seconds. Remember, energy is measured in joules, power is measured, in time is measured in second. What is the unit of power? Correct. Over four is equal to 500. Watts, but I've already given me that, so I don't have to give the mark for that. One, two, there's the three marks. Happy days. Again, two formulas to learn. Worked on in joules, force, and newtons, distance, and meters. And you should be checking this in the question. Power in watts, energy in joules, time in seconds. And you check that. Remember, the examiner's going to be slippy on that. Slippy examiner. So let's have a wee look at this one. Only a small power, small percentage of the electricity produced in the UK comes from nuclear energy. It has been proposed that this percentage be increased. Give one advantage of producing electricity using nuclear energy. Well, there's more or less two. Cost, it's cheap. And the other thing is no CO2. No carbon dioxide for a greenhouse gas. Well, the sentence for you, I'm only telling you the, what you write down. Give one disadvantage of producing nuclear. The answer is uh, difficult. To process waste. To process nuclear waste. 
Now again, you practice the full sentence, the capital letter, the full stop, the spells. At the end of their time in service, all the power stations have to be decommissioned. It's being put fully decommissioned, I mean, so dismantle power station. That's part of it. Remember, I'm looking for two marks. Dismantle power station. Make all parts safe. Just don't throw them at the paint of hedge. Right? They all have to be properly disposed of. So, go on to the next one. People who work with radioactive materials wear a small badge. It allows the amount of radiation to which they have been exposed to be measured. The diagram below shows the structure of the badge. So, making paper out here, photographic film, aluminium, top half, paper, bottom half, aluminium. The photographic film will be affected by any radiation passing through the paper and the aluminium. In, partic in a particular instance, it was found that the top half of the photographic film was affected by radiation but not the bottom half. Now remember, alpha stopped with paper. Beta stopped with aluminium. And gamma is stopped with lead. So this is really what they're asking. We've covered that. In this instance, that was the worker supposed to alpha radiation or beta radiation? Now, it was found that the top half of the photographic film was affected by radiation, but not the bottom. So it must be beta, because the top would have been stopped by the alpha, would have been stopped by the paper. But the beta must have went on through the paper. But the beta, beta didn't get through the aluminium. So the answer is beta. Right? Not stopped. By paper, beta is stopped by aluminium. Right, full sentence, capital letters, that's the theory. You can put that in better English. If the worker has been exposed to gamma radiation, what effect would have this on the photographic film? Well, all affected. Now again, what all affected? Put all affected. All affected. Gamma only stopped by lead. Right, so there's. If you're looking for good English, this is the theory. Alpha stopped by paper, beta stopped by aluminium, and lead stops gamma. And that's all that's really asking. But you've put that into good, good prose. State the meaning of half life. Well, again, I'm not going to write this down. It's the time taken for half the initial radioactive nuclei to decay. So you learn that. It's in the book. I told you to learn it. I can do you more. The volume of blood in the person's body can be measured using radioactivity. A small quantity of radioactive substance is injected into the body. After an hour, a small sample of blood is taken and its radioactivity is measured. The volume of blood can then be calculated. Three radioactive substances are available. One is a half-life of five seconds, one is a half-life of 30 minutes, and a half-life of a year. Which one is the best suited technique? Now, four marks. So we're looking, so the, whoops. Well done, well done, guys. Right. Um, four marks, so five seconds will be too little. The one year is too long, so the 30 minutes is right. So you want one with long enough half-life to measure, but short enough half-life that it doesn't cause problems. So that's why you want to explain briefly why the other two are not suitable. You couldn't use the five seconds because you couldn't really measure it, and this one is unsuitable because you wouldn't want a radioactive source in your body for more than a year. So. Right. So, so 
So here's a speed time graph. A speed time graph is a brother of a velocity time graph. So again, you should be writing down velocity at certain time. Slope is acceleration or deceleration. Remember, the acceleration goes that way, but the deceleration will go that way. And the third thing, displacement is area enclosed. So those are the three things. And remember, if you're going to have to find the area, there's a triangle, half the base by the perpendicular height, and there's a rectangle, length by breadth. Let's do the question. Use the graph to find the total distance travelled by the car in 70 seconds. Right. Again, I'm being careful here. I'm just reading off there with a the graph. Do you see that? I used, what did I use? I used a ruler. So I know I've got a triangle, and I know I've got a rectangle. So area enclosed equals displacement. There's probably a mark for that. I'm looking for four marks here, look. Four marks. Where am I? There. So let's look at the triangle. Half the base by the perpendicular height. So a half times 40 times 30. That's that one done. Half of 40 times 30. Half of 40 times 30. Right? And now this one. That one is going to be 30 times 30. Plus 30 times 30. Now, please don't follow the last hurdle here. Get the calculator out. Do the sum. So it's a half of 40, which is 20 times 30, which is 600. And 30 times 30 is 900. Just check it, just in case the Mars bar's fingers are the old brain stupid. So 900 plus 600 is 1500. Check it. 900 plus 600. 1500, so it's 1500 meters. Well, mark for the answer, mark for that, mark for these two things. I have covered my four marks there. Happy days. Fair enough for that one. Oh, here we are, our old favourite. How he balances a lever is shown. So the load X exerts a clockwise moment of 30 newton centimetres, newton centimetres moment, force, force times distance about the pivot. Where's that X? Where's it there? The string holding the load X suddenly breaks. What anti-clockwise moment exerted by the 5 newton causes the lever to tip down on the left hand side? Well, it was balanced. The clockwise moment is equal to the anti-clockwise moment, right? So it had 30 centimetres, so it was, it was balanced. If it was balanced, the two moments are the same, so it must have been 30 newton centimetres. Holly balances a different lever, now it's a different lever, as shown below. Kill the distance d between the pivot and the 6 newton force. So, oh, better put it in the shot. There it is. That force is going to make that move clockwise. See where the pencil going clockwise? And that force is going to make it move anti-clockwise. So, remember when you're talking about equilibrium, uh, three things. Clockwise moment equals anti-clockwise moment, equilibrium, and about a point. So those are the three points that you always have to make. So let's have a moment about the pivot. We're going to say clockwise moment. There's an anti-clockwise moment is equal to the clockwise moment. So the clockwise moment is, remember it's force by distance, so it's six times D is equal to eight times 30. Force by distance, eight times 30. That's 240 is equal to 6d. 240 over 6 is equal to d. Again, get the calculator out. 240 divided by 6, the answer should be 40, which it is. d is equal to 40. So 
So, three marks I'm looking for here. Let's have a look at the three marks. Three marks. Clockwise moments equals anti-clockwise moments. Force by distance is equal to force by distance. Remember, if you can't rearrange formulas, look. Six is equal to three times two. What do I want? Six divided by three is equal to two. Yes. So you, that's called exam technique if you're finding difficulty to rearrange them. I found them. I'm killed by the motorbike. Now the diagram shows the horizontal force acting on a moving motorbike. So force A is going to the right. That's a factor. It's a force. It'll have a size and a direction. This is also a factor. It will have a size and a direction. Force A is 1200 newtons. So it tells me it's 1200 newtons. Force B is 300 newtons. Calculate the acceleration of the motorbike if the rider has a total mass of 400 kilos. Now this is Newton's second law. Resultant force equals mass by acceleration. So it's 1200 to the right. Take away 300 to the left. That's your resultant force is equal to the mass. 400 times uh, 900 is equal to 400 times uh, so 900 over 400 is equal to A. Yes. 1200, take away 300, that's your resultant force, is equal to mass, 400 times A, force, kilos, meters per second squared, so we'll get the old calculator in, or 900 over 400, it's roughly 2 and a bit, 900 divided by 400 is 2.25, 2.25 meters per second squared, so 3 marks, 1, 2, 3, the bike continues to move to the right if the force B, that's the force on the back, becomes equal to force A, describe the speed. So remember Newton's force law, body means of rest or a state of form, uniform motion, unless acted upon by an external force. So these are balanced forces, so becomes equal balanced forces, constant speed. Again, speed becomes constant speed. That's the dog in the background. State of way in which the force B would become larger than the 300 newtons. Put the brakes on. Put brakes on. Friction increases. Goes through water, goes through a puddle, goes through dirt. The total potential energy of Barry and his bobsleigh at the top of the hill is 14,500 meter joules. How much useful work did Barry get to the top of the hill with his bomb say? Well, the answer must be, if he, that's what he wanted to do, he must have spent 14,500 meter joules to get him to the top. It's only one mark. Right? Use, Barry and the bomb say have a total mass of 90 kilos. Use the principle of conservation of energy to calculate the velocity at the bottom of the hill. Assume energy losses. So, that energy at the top, which is potential energy, Poor old Barry in the valve slide, whee, goes to the bottom. So all that energy is going to be in kinetic energy, right? So kinetic energy, we need to know the formula. Kinetic energy is equal to mv squared over 2. Now if you don't know it, I've told you time and over, you should know it. What are we looking for? The velocity. Well, v is equal to root 2 times the energy over the mass. The energy is measured in joules, the mass is measured in kilos, the velocity will be measured in meters per second. If you don't know how to rearrange this formula, I've shown you, you learn this. If you don't learn this, then you're not going to be able to do the question and you're not going to get the four marks. You're not going to get the four marks if you don't know that formula. If you don't know that formula, you most certainly won't know this one. So learn it. So let's V is equal to root 2E over M. The energy is measured in joule, good old Barney, 14,580 times 2 over, what's the mass of him? Barney's a mass of 80 kilos. Right, so get the calculator out. I'll tell you the side of that, see, again, the 
it's two times 14580, you think about that, divided by 90 is 324, root 324. What did I always tell you to do? Do it twice, so two times 14580 divided by 90 is 324. I want the square root of the square root of the answer. 18. Four marks formula. Put them in. Calculation. Probably the formula. Rearrange it. It's two marks. Three, four. Now there's another paper done. What I want you to do is to use this through the Google Classroom to get through and learn from every question. Do it a bit.